Hello, I'm Pika, and welcome back. Today, I want to talk about Wavebreaker. It's a new special in Splatoon 3, and a lot of people, myself included, have their eyes on it as one of the strongest specials in the game currently. If you don't know how the special works, when activated, you throw out a beacon of sorts that winds up and sends out three shockwaves that travel across the ground over a long radius. These waves don't put any paint on the ground, but they do a considerable 45 damage to anyone who touches them, and will also mark them like how point sensors do, so you can easily see who's been hit. The only way to avoid these waves is to jump over them, as anyone on the ground or swimming against a wall that they pass over will make contact. With that, Wavebreaker definitely seems like a good tool for locating and clearing enemies out of an area. That's a strong ability to have, but it can be a bit tricky to use properly. See, another property of the special is that it can actually be broken fairly easily by enemy attacks, so it's important to put it down behind cover. At the same time though, if you place it too far away from enemies, you won't really cover much of the space that they're in with the waves. Factoring both of these in, there's a balance that needs to be struck between placing the wavebreaker far enough forward to cover a large and relevant area, but also not having it be too exposed where it's easily shredded by enemies. Luckily, this balance and positioning is exactly what I want to explore today. There's all sorts of useful locations you can place Wavebreaker in, to where it would take me all day to go through all of them, but I do want to share just a few of my favorite positions on each map currently in the game to show you just what I mean, and hopefully this will give you a solid foundation to start learning effective Wavebreaker usage yourself. I'll move into the compilation in just a moment, but first I want to shout out a couple tricks that I think anyone looking to perfect this special should know. First, placing Wavebreaker on top of the tower in tower control could be very useful, since not only does this make it much harder for opponents to get near the tower or climb up it to stop you in the first place, but the Wavebreaker object itself can also act as cover, since it will absorb any shots that make contact with it first. Just be sure you're careful of charger shots, bombs, and some special weapons, since hitboxes that pierce through enemies will also hit you through the Wavebreaker. The other trick I want to share is a bit more complicated, but it's something that several of the locations I show take advantage of. For reference first, the way the waves travel is that they will always try to cover a set horizontal radius, but they do have a limit on how high or low they can go from their starting point. All you really need to know from this is that usually, Wavebreaker won't be able to hit an area of high ground above you if you place it in a lower area. However, many pieces of high ground in this game actually have ramps leading up to them. If you place the Wavebreaker ever so slightly off the ground going up the ramp, you can find a perfect height where the waves can just barely reach the area above you. This is already useful, but what's more than that is that when the waves are just within their vertical range, they end up being essentially invisible. This is a technique that my group calls Phantom Waves, and though they can be a bit tedious to get the hang of, the result is something incredibly confusing for your opponents to have to deal with. Anytime I set up a wavebreaker on a ramp like this, using Phantom Waves should be possible. With those explanations out of the way, enjoy the spots. I'm ending commentary here, so thanks for watching, and have a good one.